Hey guys, what's up? I wanted to uh, talk with you a little bit about another little part of uh, uh, Skeetersoft NP3 that you probably don't know about. My apologies for going through and telling you so much about this if you already know about it. Um, but there are a couple of things that some people who are watching this might not be familiar with. They may be used to playing Apple or Stratomatic or one of these other games. Now, there's a problem that um, comes up with these games. I talked about this the other day. The problem is what we call outs, right? And you think, what's the problem with outs? There's no problem, of course, with outs themselves, other than that this is the currency of baseball, which means that to have a good baseball game that actually works right, you really, really, really need to get the outs right. You need to make sure that you have the right outs. You need to make sure that they're all present and accounted for. It's not going to work so well if uh, you uh, don't have, say, enough caught stealings or if you don't have enough guys being thrown out in the base pads and things like that. So the theme of the game today is caught stealing. If you are an APA fan and you look at your APA board, you'll notice that caught stealing is one of the unusual play result numbers in the basic game. This is also the way that it was in national pastime. Part of the reason for that, I believe, is... Now, I'm speculating here, but I believe it's because um, uh, Clifford Van Beek actually did not have access to caught stealing information for the 1930 or 1929 season, depending upon which one you believe he used. Now, you might think, well, what's the problem with that? Well, there's a big problem with that, right? You can't just sort of make that up out of nothing, right? You kind of need to know what's going on. As a result, he was unable to build any sort of real caught stealing mechanism. He did have stolen base information, though, and Really, you're only interested in uh, showing through the uh, statistics that you can actually measure. So let's go take a look and see what's going on here. I'll take, uh, I'll show you here my screen really quick. You can see we just finished up this game, the Senators of the Red Sox. I hope that you were able to watch that. That was um, an interesting game nonetheless. Um, and uh, the standings are totally crazy here in the American League where the uh, there are three teams tied for first place and uh, the Tigers in last place are two and a half games out. So we got a lot to play and we got a lot to show you here. Go over to option of rules here and you'll see that there is um, a, a system they call the jump system. The jump system is interesting. This is not what I use. The jump system is similar to the system that uh, Stratomatic uses in that there is a steal rating on each um, uh, car player's card. It's listed below the player's fielding position and takes the following form, a two-digit number followed by a slash followed by another two-digit number, right? And so the way that this works is if we go look at any random uh, hitting card, let's see... Is this guy going to have an actual jump? No, it's N over N. So let's take a look at uh, Heine Wagner is going to have something, right? 22 over 55. This will tell you how the jump works. So when we look back at this, the, um, let's see here. You ignore all, their, all of the stuff I'm going to tell you about here in a second. And uh, what happens is um, you have an option to either play it safe and have no steal attempt or to have the guy try to steal. Um, and so when you um, use this system, if you decide to attempt a second to uh, steal second base, you roll the dice and you enter the results in the text box. It's the first, this is why I was looking at this carefully, if he hits the range between 11 and the first number, he steals the base. If he uh, hits the range between the second number and 66, he's caught stealing, right? And if it follows between it falls between 21 and 62, then he stays at first base. He doesn't get the jump, right? So that's the way that this jump system works. I don't use it. It's a little bit cumbersome because it adds another rule. But so in this case, for example, and I'll show you here. Actually, I think I've got all this. Um, well, let's see what we have here. I'll show you here. Yeah, I do have this uh, available here for us, the dice. So if Heine Wagner there were on first base, the way this works is you'd roll the dice again. His first roll here was a 61. You can see the second range is from 55 to 66. So the 61 that I just rolled on these dice means that he would be caught stealing. If we roll again and see what happens, oh, he gets a 26 this time, right? So this time around, he would have nothing happen to him. Then if we roll this time around, wow, look at that, it worked. 14 is under 22, between 11 and 22. And so Heine Wagner would then successfully steal the base. Like I said, if you have played the uh, Stratomatic game, if you're uh, familiar with Stratomatic and its uh, base stealing system and the advanced game, I believe, and I think it came out uh, either in 80 or 82, around that time when a lot of people stole bases, you'll recognize this. It's kind of the same system, right? In very, very basic terms, it's kind of the same thing. That is one system, and the other system is the one I'm going to show you here, right? The other system, the one that I use, is what they call the little C system. And so what happens here is there are some play results that have stolen bases built into them, right? We'll look at the boards. If we look over here at 11 with bases empty, there is a stolen base. You get a single and you steal a base. 
Runner on first base, a 10 or 11 will send the runner to fir- third base, and then the uh, batter automatically will steal a second base, and so on and so forth. If we go through all of these, there's always a stolen base at the end of 11 and 10, like some percentage of the time there is, though sometimes there's not, and it depends upon the letter grade of the pitcher too, right? And it depends upon sort of what the situation is and so on. But the 11 will always give you a stolen base just about, and not with runners on first and third for whatever reason. So basically, you think of the 11 as sort of that stolen base um, uh, rule. However, there's another rule that's possible as well, which is a 14 with an S, in which um, a person will get a walk and then steal another base, right? Um, On some card sets, sets, an asterisk is used in place of the letter S. That is true, because for some card sets, for some of the real older Skeetersoft card sets, um, Bill Staffer used the APA model, which was using a star. Um, and, uh, there were also occasionally, um, play result numbers like six or even a two that would result in this happening. So I'm going to take a look here. I don't want to show everything I do here on camera for you, but I'm going to change the season, the uh, season really quick. And let's see if we can find a player that might have one of these other kind of interesting, uh, uh results that allow him to steal a base. Right. Um, so we're going to look over here in, uh, let's see. We'll look over here at this team right here, and let's see if we have one. Yes, we do here. Here we go. So uh, if I show you my screen here, this is the 1982 uh, Oakland Athletics, and here we have, no surprise, Ricky Henderson, who has a 14S. So if you roll this 14 using the little C system, he's going to steal a base after the walk. He has another one here, another one here, another one here, another one here. So there's a lot of stolen bases, right? He also has a lot of these six S's, which means that after a double, he will steal a base. The reason why, not necessarily because we want to get him a ton of steals of third, but rather because we need to get some extra stolen bases there. Interesting card where he's got a 10, and he's got an 11 here, and then he's got three zeros as well as a couple of 11s there in double columns to give him even more of those stolen bases. That's what you have to do when the guy steals 130 bases. Now, if you use the other system, you can see that first number is a 45, <laughs> which means that chances are that he's always going to have the jump and he's always going to steal the base, and you're always going to want him to uh, uh, go ahead and do that. Um, so pretty interesting stuff there in the way that this little C system works. Now, to offset it, there's also a, the little C, which means that the um, batter or the runner is caught stealing. And this can be a little bit annoying, but it's done for a reason. It's done to make sure that you get the outs. Those outs from those caught stealings are really, really important. It means that if you are going to use the jump system with this game, you need to make sure that you're rolling those extra dice, which is one reason why I don't use it. If you're using a little C system, you need to make sure that you're not playing it safe with every batter. You need to make sure that there's a chance that a guy's going to get caught stealing so that your outs are there and your caught stealing statistics are right. This is a problem, and this is a problem that a lot of people, I think, don't fully recognize when they play these baseball games because it really has a significant major impact on your statistics. If you don't have enough outs, if you don't have enough outs on the base paths, you're going to see weird things happen with your averages, and in some cases, you will see runs scored become too high because there are too many guys on base for the base hits that your game is based around, right? This is one of those conundrums and one of those puzzles that people who create these games and who care about baseball simulators have to solve. It's not a puzzle that is solved by creating a computer-only game or a game that has a pitch-by-pitch system, by the way. It still exists. And there are games out there that are very well known that uh, some of us play a lot that have problems because they either have a user-generated, like, you choose when to steal system that uh, users use either too frequently or not frequently enough, or because uh, they have some problem with uh, the base advancement system and, and things like that that will take things totally out of what they should be in real life and will give you results that uh, will not really be all that great. You see now, though, this is one of the reasons why I talk so much about like why we shouldn't rely on autoplay. When you understand some of these problems here, you're going to realize that if you want a replay that really means a lot for you, you kind of have to take control of it yourself and make sure that things happen right. I love playing against the computer. You've seen me do it a lot with Diamond Mine Baseball. But sometimes it's just not quite right. Sometimes they're not quite managing the game right. They're stealing when they probably shouldn't be, right? I wish the Diamond Mine had a little C system so I could stop worrying about this stuff and just play the game. If I leave it open to the computer manager, oftentimes it will make kind of bizarre decisions as to when to steal and when not to steal that are not really that realistic. So... Anyway, there you have it. That's sort of my opinion on this. Love to know what you think about it. I love these systems. I think that they're absolutely awesome. And um, it's just fascinating, fascinating stuff. And I can sit here and study this stuff all night long. Hopefully some of you will want to geek out along with me. And I'll talk with you tomorrow. Bye.